Jupiter, Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you, and thank you so much for, for having this hearing today and for all of you being here and all of the good work you're doing because we know this um, abuse occurs and we need to make sure we're out there fighting for and protecting, not just uh, uh, seniors, but minors as well, anybody who comes into this protected class that we should be looking at. So uh, I'm sure that you all have read or are aware uh, of the New York article about some of the abuses occurring in Nevada prior to 2013. Um, but since that time, the state has drastically overhauled its laws to make sure that these abuses are ended, something that was not reported um, in the New Yorker article, unfortunately. So I wanted to talk about this because the overhaul um, of our um, guardianship laws uh, began um, when I initially introduced uh, uh, um, as AG um, uh, legislation. Uh, as Attorney General in the state of Nevada, you get to introduce legislation. And so before I termed out, I had a bill package ready to go and pre-filed it. Um, and the legislation really was specific about um, requiring private professional guardians to be licensed and bonded, created oversight of them by the Commissioner of Financial Institutions, a separate outside of the courts oversight body, as well as laying out a strict fiduciary duty standard that they must follow. That bill, unfortunately, the, the attorney general who came in after me decided he did not want to introduce that bill. Knowing that, I reached out to my colleagues in the legislature, the Speaker of the House at the time, and one another assemblyman, and asked them to introduce my bill, and they did. So in 20, or during our legislative session in 2015, when I was no longer AG, it still went forward. And Assemblyman Mike Sprinkle introduced it as AB, um, 325. But during that time, that bill was passed. But along with that, we realized more needed to be done in Nevada to address this issue because, as you've heard from the horrific stories, um, so much was happening. So um, in June 8th of 2015, uh, our Supreme Court um, uh, commissioned a study uh, to study, the, uh, and it was the commission to study the administration of guardianships in Nevada courts, uh, and it was created. Um, in September of 2016, it issued its final report, right here. And there are 14 recommendations for new court rules and 16 recommendations for legislative changes to the NRS. Those legislative changes were adopted. Those court rules were adopted. Um, and uh, so much of what we have done was an overhaul, a complete overhaul. And everything you're talking about today was what the commission studied and we implemented. So uh, I applaud you for uh, what you are doing. I welcome you to take a look at the reports and what we have done, uh, either as a model or tell us additional things that we should be doing. So let me, let me also um, talk about the questions here that I have. Um, and let me maybe start with Dr. Cohn. Um, how, uh, we talked a little bit about this, but how important is it oversight of guardianships to making sure that we can prevent some of these abuses from occurring? And by doing that, we are not just relying on the court oversight, but an independent body, which I've heard today. That seems to be key here, correct? Absolutely. The court has a tremendously important role in monitoring guardianship. Um, there needs to be an annual report. Guardians should have to do a person-centered plan so that the court can figure out whether what the guardian is doing is consistent with what the guardian said they were going to do. Um, and the courts need to be open to communications from individuals that suggest abuse, even if those communications don't come on a petition format, right, or the right piece of paper. You need ways that informal grievances can be brought to the court. But in order to have those informal grievances, you need people to have notice that they have a right to make that informal right. grievance. So it's incredibly important that at the time of the initial order, the individual subject to guardianship and any family or friends who can reasonably serve as that extra eyes and ears of the court not only know that there's been a guardian appointed, but know what powers that guardian has been given and know how they can alert the court uh, to potential abuse, to a change in the person's need, um, to uh, other problems that may be occurring. And if we can provide that notice, um, then we can have these additional monitoring uh, abilities without expense to the court. Um, and can prevent the guardianship in part from further isolating um, the individual subject to guardianship and from further estranging the family. 
Thank you. And, and let me, uh, I know my time's running out, but I, I want to highlight something else and ask you, because one of the things that Nevada did uh, as part of its guardianship reform legislation in 2017 that I don't think has been replicated anywhere else is that it actually went further than a right to counsel for protected persons to create the requirement of counsel. This means that as soon as a petition for appointment of a guardian is filed, the court is automatically required to appoint them a legal aid attorney specializing in guardianship law unless they already have that attorney. And this is paid for by a fee on recording documents with the court. What is your opinion on Nevada's requirement of counsel? Do you think that's uh, Nevada's no? requirement is the best practice. Yeah. Um, court, all people who are the respondent in a guardianship proceeding should have an attorney there to represent their wishes. And that's critical, mm -hmm. right? It's not just their interest. That's what a guardian ad litem does, mm -hmm. right? Their best interest. But each individual who's going through that process deserves and I think is entitled to an attorney who can voice their preferences, whether that be a preference about whether there should be a guardianship, whether that be a preference about what power should be included in that guardianship, or whether that's a preference about who serves. I want my daughter Mary, and I don't want my daughter Betsy. Great. Thank you. I know my time is up. Thank you very much.